All right, hello everyone. Today I have with me a very special guest, Gary Cousins. He's an astrologer, and so we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and astrology and world events, uh, the basic astrology as well as the crypto astrology. So, Gary, thanks for being here. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here with you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's dive in. We're going to take a look at the world astrology here. We have a solar eclipse coming up. <laughs> so that's the so first yeah, thing. I mean, I think the solar eclipse on Monday is probably one of the most hyped astronomical, astrological events that I've ever seen, actually. I actually experienced a solar eclipse in 2001 in Zimbabwe. And I mean, I highly recommend, like, if you get an opportunity to experience a solar eclipse, it's the most mind-blowing experience of your life. Nothing, mm. nothing that you say in words can describe it. You have to experience it. It, to me, feels like the whole concept of time completely just evaporates because you, ha you have sunset and sunrise within a few minutes of time. And during that full darkness, you know, the animals, animal noises, night noises, night animals come awake. I mean, it's like so discombobulating. I feel like it's an experience where you completely lose what time is and you kind of come out of it completely shifted and changed. In that way, I think, you know, ancients were very like, a fearful of eclipses and there certainly is a correlation between eclipses and earthquakes. I, I do think like the big earthquake that happened a couple of days ago in Taiwan is probably related, correlated with this eclipse. I, I'm, I, I think with eclipse, with a lot of astrological events, we always look to the future but I think sometimes um, you can, there's a lot of astrology which shows that you can like work with time going backwards. Mm. I mean, that is the nature of time. It's this really weird kind of mystery. Um, mm. So, yeah, this big, the big eclipse coming up on Monday is a big one. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot being said lot. about this yeah. eclipse. <laughs> but I think let's just like, um, you know, maybe it might be useful to just talk about like, well, what does it mean to crypto? Um, the eclipse mm. per se, I mean, personally, I don't worry too much about eclipses unless they have, personally, if they have a direct hit to my own personal astrology chart. And similarly, when we're looking at charts of um, crypto charts, if the eclipse, which is nothing more than a new moon, but it's a very powerful new moon. Mm -hmm. If that, that chart has a direct hit, or the eclipse chart makes a direct hit to the chart of, um, in this case, say Bitcoin or mm -hmm. Ethereum, then we need to say, okay, there's, there's something to this eclipse. I mean, this eclipse is interesting because it's sun and moon at 19 degrees of Aries um, and is exactly conjunct the asteroid Chiron. So. Yeah. That becomes interesting. Um, Aries is interesting because it's the zodiac sign where the sun is in what's called exaltation. So the sun is like even more powerful. And Aries is always this, the zodiac sign of new beginnings. So it does speak of, you know, at a mundane global level of something new happening. Mm. And there's a lot more that people talking about, you know, it's making a across of the 2017 eclipse that crossed over the United States. So there's this, there's a lot happening and there's a lot of crazy conspiracy fringe stuff like, oh, NASA is shooting rockets into the oh, eclipse. Yeah. I mean, really, we're just putting some probes in to see what happens when you block out the energy from the sun, you know, when CERN is turning on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the particle collider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Whoa. There's a lot, but we're not yet to go into all of those conspiracy theories. I think yeah. what's interesting is that the chart per se does not do anything specific to the Bitcoin chart. However, the transits around that, I mean, maybe let's pull up the, the, the chart of Bitcoin. If we look at the chart of the eclipse, so we've got 19 degrees of Aries. So there's the actual eclipse. Eclipses only take place 
when the node is close to the lunation um, south or north node. It's a north node eclipse, so it carries some kind of more positive energy than if it was a oh, yeah. negative uh, mm. a south node eclipse. Mm. Um, but there's a couple of things that become interesting. We're seeing that we're building up to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, which takes place on the 20th of April. And that makes this nice, really harmonious trine to the Bitcoin Saturn. But what is interesting on the day of the eclipse is that Venus sits right on the Bitcoin moon. Mm. That's a very positive indicator. And um, so all in all, I think, you know, I think there's some positive energy coming out of this eclipse in relation to Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Bitcoin's also getting a pretty positive transit. If we go to uh, Jupiter sextile, the Bitcoin Uranus. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So um, we've got some positive transits coming up for the month of April. However, there's also some negative transits coming kind of from the mid mid part of April as well. So I would say you know from Monday's time through until what are we talking here? We're talking the 9th of April. Yeah, you know, Jupiter is pretty much exactly sextiling the Uranus on the um, on the day mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the eclipse. So all in all, I'm seeing like quite a positive energy from the eclipse in relation to Bitcoin. Yeah, so we could possibly get, well, we already are getting a pump today, actually. Yeah, yeah. And um, we could see a pretty positive April. Well, what concerns me is this um, yeah, that one. start here of Uranus square Neptune, and mm -hmm. there is a Neptune sextile Jupiter and a Jupiter square Neptune. Ooh. So we've yep. got a lot of Neptunian energy starting to come into play <clears throat> for the second half of April. Yeah. And Neptune energy really speaks to me of, you know, delusion, euphoria, over excitement. Um, <laughs> and it's all around, you know, the Bitcoin halving. So, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. So I kind of think, are we, you know, the hype of the halving? There's a lot of hype. Yeah. There's a lot of hype. Yeah. And, you know, I don't believe like on the halving date, we're going to see this massive increase in Bitcoin price. I just, somehow the astrology does not correlate. I think we may see, you know, something to the opposite, that we actually yeah. could see a, a drop. You know, everyone's expecting the halving to bring this, you know, big surge in price. But that being said, I think we also have to kind of not forget that on the day of the halving, I believe the halving miners or the Bitcoin miners are targeting to try and make the halving happen on 420, which would be <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. And that is the exact day of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Mm -hmm. Now Jupiter-Uranus is, um, Jupiter brings expansion. Uranus is this maverick, very volatile energy. It, Uranus mm -hmm. has an affinity and connection with technology. So it is a bullish signature for technology, but it's something like I'm cautious about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's bullish long term. Yeah, I mean, um, but it's also potentially the start of a new cycle. Yeah, and, which... and, and it's at 21 degrees and it's making that harmonious trine to the Bitcoin uh, Saturn. <clears throat> so yep, yep. I like it, but at the same time, I'm cautious because of all of this Neptunian mm, energy on trickster. the Bitcoin. So yeah, it's a bit like, you know, is this overhyped? So mm -hmm. I would like, I would say, really pay really close attention, as everyone is, as to what's happening on 19th, 20th of April. Mm. Um, the halving is going to happen, probably they say the 20th, but it's scheduled for the 19th, but it's still it's all algorithmic so um, the countdown timers are there mm -hmm. so yeah that 
is I'm wary for the latter half of um, Uranus of, of of April, the latter half of April for um, Bitcoin. Yeah, I would exercise some caution. Um, if we look at the Ethereum chart, so maybe just bring up the Ethereum chart. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this, the transits, so the outer outer ring is the transits on the 8th of April, and the inner is Ethereum. Mm. So we're sitting at 19 degrees. Um, what is interesting about this chart mm. is that on the 9th of January 2018, people can go back and have a look, it was the first all-time high of... Um, Ethereum. And on that date, you had the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter exactly conjunct at 19 degrees of Capricorn. So 19 degrees of Capricorn is exactly square, or let's say 19 degrees of, of Aries right now, exactly squares that event of mm. 2018. So there's an interesting correlation between this eclipse activating an event that was to do with the Ethereum all-time high. Mm. So are we going to have another potentially all-time high for Ethereum and there's going to be a collapse? You know, if we just look at the Ethereum chart, what else is happening to the Ethereum chart that becomes important? We've got Saturn... <coughs> at 14 degrees making an inconjunct angle to 14 degrees of the Ethereum Mercury. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's an inconjunct it speaks of a price adjustment and particularly with Mercury, Mercury is the planet of trade. Um, mm -hmm. So it speaks to me like there's, an, there's a price adjustment coming for Ethereum as a result of the solar eclipse. Um, <clears throat> the <clears throat> what else is interesting? Yeah, Mars. Mars is also activating on the day of the um, Mars at 13 degrees of Pisces is making a, an exact sextile with the Ethereum um, Pluto. So again, we've got it's a strong trigger to to the Ethereum chart. This eclipse. So and the sun is almost. Directly conjunct with the Uranus. Yeah, exactly. Uranus. That's right. Yeah, so the eclipse, correct. We've got the eclipse, in fact, yeah, actually, should have been the first point I mentioned. The, <laughs> the eclipse is within one degree, and we use one degree as the orb for eclipses. So mm. it's exactly hitting the Uranus. And again, when Uranus gets hit, it's like, phew, big change, big volatility, big change. So, yeah. Um, you know, is it a big change up or is it a big change down? Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say because, you know, we're really on this, um, this time frame of um, the Bitcoin halving. Because the thing about the Ethereum chart is at the end of the day and all crypto, it all defaults back to the mother of them all and that's being the Bitcoin chart. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the primary chart to really work from is, though sometimes the other crypto charts really have a life of their own, but at the end of the day, what happens to Bitcoin um, influences how we see the other charts. But we, we sometimes you'll see shifts in the Bitcoin price and then the other charts do their own thing for a period of time and they kind of like catch up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, should we look at the world astrology? Yeah, let's have a look at kind of what's coming up for the, the global, what might, what's called mundane transits for the coming year. So Pluto, well, of course, yeah, the Jupiter-Uranus okay, So the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, that's like the big event for yeah. the year. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, it's just, it can go either way. I just feel like it's really hard, always hard to get a handle on Uranus. Uranus <laughs> is a bolt of lightning. Now, which way is that lightning going to strike? Nobody can predict. Right. You know, I right. think Uranus, that is the magic of Uranus. It's this magical, unpredictive, maverick energy, but it's correlated with technology. So I am optimistic, 
But, mm -hmm. you know, for Bitcoin, there are some negative transits coming in for the latter half of April. So, yeah, we've spoken about that. The next big event for me that's coming up is the Jupiter entering um, oh. Gemini. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that date is, what are we talking about? 25th May, of May. 25th. You know, whenever a big planet changes sign, there's definitely a shift in world events. Mm. So, um, mm. again, Gemini is the archetypal sign of communication. Um, Jupiter bringing expansion into that whole area of communication. Mm. Our whole global network now is a communication network, the internet. So, it's definitely, I would say, very bullish again for technology, for communications, for anything to do with the internet, which is pretty much... Maybe there's going to be new social medias coming out. Perhaps, you know. It's possible. It's possible. It might take a little bit more. Um, I mean, shortly after that, we have Jupiter, Tri, and Pluto, another very kind of bullish indicator. Mm. And that is what date we have? June 2nd. June 2nd. Um, okay. Yeah, that's Polish, okay. Yeah. I mean, then we come with Sash, uh, Saturn stationing retrograde. Right. Um, you know, Saturn is obviously always the guy who's going to say, whoa, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you move too fast. <laughs> you know, and when he retrogrades even more so, he's saying, you know, let's just pull things back a little bit. Let's just yeah. slow things down. And that's... Coming mm. end of June, right? 29 June. Well, yeah, which is right around the time that Bitcoin is getting um, the Saturn conjunct Bitcoin Uranus. Right. And yeah, yeah. So wow. We could definitely get a market slowdown then. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, and we're definitely seeing, um, yeah, and if we look further into July, August, then mm, we yeah. see this. Jupiter square Saturn running from the latter part of August through until middle end of December. You know, Saturn square Jupiter is definitely a slowdown indicator. Mm. And what's interesting is the Ethereum chart, the natal, the birth chart of Ethereum has a Jupiter square Saturn in its birth chart. So a Jupiter square Saturn in the sky. So often, you know, when themes from the birth chart are repeated in the sky, there will often be triggers to that astrology chart. Um, one of the things which is interesting is that you, if you look at the Ethereum chart, Ethereum is born with a retrograde Venus. And whenever Venus goes retrograde, there has been a correlation of the price of Ethereum going down. So similarly, this... Jupiter square Saturn leads me to think that there's an Ethereum buying opportunity coming up in the months between August and December. Probably more likely August, September. Hmm. Sure, okay. That's, yeah, that's definitely possible. Yeah, and then what do we see there is Uranus stations retrograde. So we've got Saturn that's gone retrograde, so Uranus stations retrograde. And then we've got Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. Capricorn. Ooh, so that's, man. Yeah, so that really is the final, I think, the final transit back into Capricorn. Yep. That's so it. in other words, you know, if we really had to zoom out of this whole picture, um, Pluto is the story of the transformation of the global economic system. And Pluto entered into Capricorn. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, what's very interesting is if you have a look at the heliocentric, heliocentric charts, so that's not the astrology chart from the Earth perspective, but that's like looking from the Sun perspective. And you don't get no retrograde Whoa. planets. But Pluto entered, Pluto was at zero degrees of Capricorn in January 2009. Um, and 
that really... When Bitcoin was born. Yeah, when Bitcoin was born. Yeah. And I think there's also a correlation. And may, maybe I've got it wrong slightly, but in 2008 when the white paper came out, uh -huh. you know, this fundamentally what Bitcoin represents is a new system of exchange of Store money. Store of value. Store of value. Yeah. Exchange of money. Mm. Uh, decentralized, which is the most fundamental thing. Mm -hmm. And Aquarius is, from an archetypal perspective, the sign of decentralization. Mm -hmm. um, Pluto is not fully, fully in Aquarius yet. He'll only yeah. fully be finally into Aquarius in November of this year. So, you know, this past year and 2024, it's Pluto back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius. Mm. And in the back and forth, Pluto is moving back onto the Bitcoin Jupiter. And again, Jupiter-Pluto is in a very interesting signature. I always call it the signature of the billionaire. Because if you go look at the birth charts of various billionaires like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. they all have either a Pluto-Jupiter conjunction or they have a Pluto-Jupiter aspect in their charts. And there's a few other billionaires who have that as well. So I, call it, I call it the billionaire signature. So when Pluto came onto the Bitcoin Jupiter, which is basically end of last year and a few times this year, to me it's like saying Bitcoin is being birthed into this new store of value. I mean, there's still a huge resistance from mm -hmm. the incumbent powers that be to Bitcoin. You know, I mean, but they're also starting to invest in it. Yeah, the ETFs, they also the ETFs. Uh, BlackRock. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Jeez. what's fascinating is that I think in 2013, Coinbase tried to get an ETF approved mm -hmm. for Bitcoin, and it got rejected by the SEC. Mm -hmm. And now, finally, BlackRock comes into, and they've got the, the muscle and political clout, and it gets approved. So the mainstream, it's here to stay. Bitcoin ain't going away at all. And for those people that are really skeptical about Bitcoin, because there's a lot of people who don't understand Bitcoin. Yeah, they keep yeah. saying, you know, it's a Ponzi. It's going to collapse. It has no backing to it. But nothing has any backing to it. You know, it's all just what we believe. We believe there's value in the US dollar because okay, mm -hmm. we can say the whole mighty empire of the United States is behind, but I mean, what is the US owe? $34 trillion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who they owe the money to. No but, big deal. You know, we're going to keep on printing money, but inflation is going to bite us, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is the future, and that future is going to be realized, and there's um, some interesting astrology in 2025, which really correlates Ooh. to... Um, Bitcoin becoming like, I think we're going to see Bitcoin in 2025, just like orders of magnitude increase in value. But I think that's mm. discussion for another video we can go into. Oh, no, that is interesting. That's a cliffhanger right there. But there's, I'm going to leave that out and say we have some really interesting astrology for Bitcoin to talk about for 2025. Ooh, um, good. And using lesser known astrology techniques such as solar arc directions, um, progress charts, we can look into that. But Beautiful. Kind of like if you are not a trader and you want to just invest money into Bitcoin, like just invest and look away. Don't worry about the ups yeah. and downs of Bitcoin. Emphasis on look away. But yeah. by 2025, you're... You know, if you're going to dollar cost average, keep putting money in every month, irrespective of the price. Mm -hmm. You're going to be very happy in 2025. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's a kind of like a little cliffhanger for something we can talk about in the future. Yeah, I'm excited so, for that. But yeah, um, I think if we look at this this chart for yeah, I mean, even this minor aspect, Jupiter sesquiquadrate Pluto mm -hmm. it's a negative minor aspect but that's correlating right through um, it's a minor aspect but you know the Jupiter square Saturn is probably the big event for things really slowing down hmm. but then I mean Pluto going into Capricorn for the final 
time uh, is usually the most intense. Yeah, right? in fact, you're correct. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like this is the, um, the, final, the final episode in the series, you know? Yeah. Where the, the, all, all, it's the like climax. it's the final climax. It's the final transformation of this whole story of the Pluto journey through Capricorn. It started in 2008. And we saw we had a massive financial crisis. And if it wasn't for all of the bailouts that happened, the world's economy would really have collapsed. Yeah. You know? Um, <clears throat> so. But it could be the, man, I mean, I mean, it's the collapse of the, potentially the old structures. Yeah, I mean. So. But I think it really speaks of like, because when Pluto turns around, he's going to then do his final conjunction to the Bitcoin Jupiter. So to me, it's mm. like finally cementing the mm. value of Bitcoin. You know? Ooh. Um, I think it's the final cementing of the value. And when Pluto finally moves fully into Aquarius, you know, it's over the next yep. 14 years that we're going to see the world shift. And obviously, in that period, we're going to have pretty much all governments in the world release their CBDs, CBDCs. Yeah. You know, so digital, digital dollars, digital euros. I mean, I'm wondering if we might see that this year. I think it's still too soon. Hmm. Um, With Pluto going into Aquarius for the final. Yeah. I mean, certainly they're working on it. They've announced it. Um, I think they're I ready. Think they're certainly ready, and I think we, we may start seeing trials of it happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is interesting that the, the digital Naira in Nigeria kind of failed because nobody used it. Mm. But all governments have to actually do to make their CBDs being used is to simply withdraw cash, <laughs> to, to remove the cash out of society. Mm. And that is going to happen. I mean, I, I do laugh at... You know, I've seen various memes on Facebook where people say, only use cash, only use cash. Yeah, it's all good and well to only use cash, but what if the government just makes a law and says we no longer accept cash? Cash is no longer or can be legal tender. You have to use our digital dollar, digital currency. Well, then people are going to use it. I mean, I don't think that people are going to want to do that. So I think there's going to be a lot of pushback. Um, I mean, I, I suspect what's going to happen, you know, this is getting quite futuristic, but I do think we're going to have basic, uh, what's it called? Basic income. Universal basic, basic income. Universal I basic too. income. Because yeah. Aquarius, yeah. Pluto and Aquarius, Aquarius is all about, um, you know, everyone has equal. Yeah. And I uh, think, you know, everyone's going to be given money, yeah. which you're going to redeem by downloading the wallet. CBDCs, probably. The CBDC yeah. wallet. That makes sense. You know, and it's going to happen. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. It's probably not going to happen for overnight. There's going to be a transition period. And there's going to be a lot of people who are going to oppose it. But, oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, it is the future. It's like we know we live mm -hmm. in a digital world. Everything. We already do, go, pretty much. <laughs> we do completely. We don't use you know? cash very often. I mean, I don't use cash at all. And, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. it catches me out. You know, some days in Bali where I don't have, um, or well, catches me out if my cell phone's about to go flat. <laughs> but pretty much, I mean, I was in Jakarta last week, and a couple of restaurants I went to all had signs, we are cashless. Whoa. 2025, we're going to start seeing governments re release CBDCs. You know? Okay. And there's going to mm. be resistance, but the resistance is futile. <laughs> you know, I do well, Aquarius is revolution. Sure. But, but I mean, people. at some point, you know... Cash is going to be removed. I mean, as I said, we already find many countries in the world now. You can't pay with cash. Mm. You have to use your credit card. And mm. people are already used to just going cashless. I find it super convenient. And, you know, eventually it's going to be, well, you have an app and you have CBDCs. But mm -hmm. at the same time, for me, that's like, that's the real, that's the revolutionary part of crypto. That people mm. who say, I don't want to transact and have my privacy completely monitored by the government. Because that's what yeah. governments will do with CBDCs. And that is why I will, 
I mean, I'm a bit of an anarchist in my viewpoint of reality. I have Monero crypto stored on a hardware wallet for the day when <laughs> I need to use it, you know? Uh. Um, I mean, look what happened to Binance. They delisted Monero. Why yeah. did they delist Monero? Because the SEC said, exactly. we don't like what you're doing. Yeah. Get rid of Monero. Mm -hmm. So private coins are not in favor from governments, mm -hmm. you know? And I believe there's, I mean, there's private blockchains now that are being invented. Um, so there's some interesting stuff. I mean, I do think the privacy blockchain, privacy coin space is going to have a future. There's no question about that. I just don't know if people will be able to cash it out into. They're definitely not going to be able to cash it out into. CBDCs. Yeah, they won't be able to cash it out. Can you convert it into real value? Maybe if you trade between yourselves. Well, I think in decentralized exchanges, you know, more and more we're going to see the rise of decentralized exchanges, mm, and yeah. that's where I do think. There's long-term um, investment opportunities in decentralized exchanges, mm. and I think in um, privacy coins, privacy blockchains. By that, I think it's the future. I think, mm. but the future is not far away, as we all know. The future is like, speeding up. <laughs> oh yeah, it's here. It's here. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at probably what everyone's been waiting for is the Bitcoin astrology. So we have the Saturn sextile the Bitcoin Sun, which is quite bullish and we just got a direct hit a couple days ago and Bitcoin has gotten a pump yeah uh, but we get it again in October so yeah so you know we spoke about June July August as being buying opportunity for crypto and I do think the latter part of the year is looking very bullish so there we're seeing that satin sextile Bitcoin Sun really right through from September through until December, end of December, definitely looking very, very positive. Um, yep. And there's also the U.S. election and... Yeah, and, and, and it, you know, many, many commentators believe that the U.S. government will organize a decrease in interest rates so that yeah. people start buying property, so there's a sense of the economy is going great, let's vote for the incumbent government. And yeah, a lot of that money, because there's always additional money when interest rates oh, yeah. are dropped, that money is going to flow into crypto. So yeah, I'm bullish about the latter part of the year for Bitcoin and ultimately the whole um, crypto market. Yeah, and if we look at each time Bitcoin had a bull market, there was money printing so uh, the next time they turn on that money printer which is they probably will have to reset the interest rates first like you said uh, yeah, once they turn on that lowering interest rates is going to cause increase in inflation but yeah that only comes months later and yeah. then you know then they start printing money mm -hmm. um, you know it's I mean many commentators believe at some point there has to be a reset yeah. of the U.S. dollar and of the U.S. economy. How exactly that's going to happen, no one really knows because more and more printing will take place. But at some point, it's inevitable, you know, that... Mm -hmm. And, you know, the BRICS countries and other countries are moving more and more to get away from using the U.S. as a reserve currency. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a whole other deep discussion. Yeah, definitely. That's fascinating. So then we get the Saturn conjunct the Bitcoin Uranus. We talked about this briefly, but yeah, I mean, so that's, that's looking like a dump in the summer. Yeah, so it's kind of like just at a zoom out, you know, if we just use Saturn um, and the ancient astrologers only used Saturn, you know, mm. they only knew about Saturn. They didn't know about the outer planets. Saturn is, you know, tells us what's going to happen with um, the limits and the boundaries and the edges of things mm. and when Saturn is making a challenging aspect which he is in the summer the northern hemisphere summer um, yeah that does look like a buying opportunity time for crypto definitely Bitcoin going down yeah 
So, yeah, I mean, I, know, I mean, another thing I noticed, Solana was getting really positive astrology May, June, so there could be a blow-off top, potentially, with uh, the altcoins and Ethereum mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's looking like we're going to see some summer lows, for sure. Yeah, and just this, you know, this, this is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, Pluto makes its final... Um, Conjunction. Conjunction, not not exact, but it's coming within, okay. you know, to the minute. But it's 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 within the degree. Yeah. On the Bitcoin Jupiter, we spoke about that. But you know that that really cements Bitcoin as a store of value. You know, I, I really think. I mean, it's already happening this year. Obviously, we spoke about the ETFs. <clears throat> Mainstream is acknowledging. You know, Bitcoin is here to stay. But I think in terms of everybody, all the final naysayers are going to like fall away in that latter part of this year. Bitcoin, you know, as a store of value will be totally cemented by the end of this year, beginning of 2025. Mm. So, and that to me is the signature of Pluto on the Bitcoin Jupiter, the final, the final exact hit. Okay, I want to pull up this chart from Rahul Powell, and, and this is the federal government current expenditures, interest payments, 36-month lead. So basically, from my understanding, the blue line is the amount of money that the U.S. government owes, uh, the interest payments that are owed. And the white line, coincidentally, is the money printing, basically. Um, and arguably, a lot of the world governments could definitely say the United States are basically bankrupt. So, I mean, you know, I mean, what the chart is saying is by 2025, the U.S. is paying more money on interest payments than anything else, and it's it's yeah. going exponential. So and so, where does it end? <laughs> And but and and how are they going to pay for this? Well, what 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 did they do last time in COVID? Uh, they turned on that money printer, and the money printer went. Brrr, and as you can see, it was but following that, this. That line. led to massive inflation. Exactly, exactly. So which is another what, problem. To what level do, does inflation then really start going up again? And, yeah. And you know, we see from other countries, massive inflation leads to serious social unhappiness and unrest yeah so i mean that's why by the end of i mean when we get into 20 end of 2025 2026 that's very concerning right there yeah is what's going to happen after that but in the meantime uh it looks like the only way they're probably going to pay for this is the money printer and so Typically, you know, we might see something like what happened in 2020, where we got the COVID collapse, they reset interest rates, the Fed dropped rates, um, and then that allowed them to turn on the money printer. That looks like, I can't think of any other way out of this. So the money printer is probably going to come on very soon because um, they are going to start owing more and more interest payments here. And what happens historically when that happens is crypto goes off on a unbelievable bull run and so it looks like we could be seeing that uh, we're already seeing it this year heading into 2025 maybe even to 2026 I mean yeah. look at that I mean there's a lot of macro stuff coming even from the astrology that says 2025 2026 is pretty much a signature of something massively new for humanity um, particularly 2026 um, yes, some yes, very yes, yes. interesting astrology for 2026 um, yeah. that speaks of pretty much a new renaissance, though there's a negative possibility that it speaks of war. Because mm. um, when that signature has happened in past, it's been a renaissance or it's been war. And we can only but pray that it's a new renaissance. And I do think, you know, like the age of Aquarius which is firmly coming into place as Pluto is in Aquarius, speaks of a new way for society. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, you know, technology is going exponential. I mean, AI, I mean, 
most commentators believe that we're going to have AGI, artificial and general intelligence, within the next couple of years. And I mean, we cannot even begin to imagine society yeah. after that. <laughs> oh my God. And then you've got quantum computers and you've got nanotechnology and you've got CRISPR gene editing. And, you know, it's just... Oh my God. It's... You think the world changed in the last hundred years. I mean, we know that change is going exponential. Everything's going exponential, including the U.S. debt. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I just think of watching the movie Star Wars. Like, yeah. are, are we heading into that kind of a yeah. future? I, I'm excited about the future. I'm always an optimist. Yeah. And I'm an optimist yeah. about technology, and I'm an optimist about the future. But, mm -hmm. you know, I also know that we've got a lot of serious things yeah from climate change to economic inequality massive massive things oh yeah needs to be Huge. changed but i'm yeah. hopeful though i think yeah i mean we're definitely gonna be going through some major challenges but i'm hopeful that community is gonna yeah but I, I know that you know that period late 2024 to 25 26 it's when this whole new economic system that crypto is building yeah is really going to come into into the fall and i think we're going to see just a massive shift of how we transact i mean mm -hmm. i i do dream of a day when you know i don't care what bitcoin's value against the u.s dollar is yeah. it's just i've got bitcoin or i've got satoshis which i transact with mm -hmm. i get paid in satoshis i pay in satoshis it's a whole new currency that exists Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it sure seems like, and and all the astrology is pointing to us transitioning to an entirely new system. Yeah, I mean, yeah. especially 2026. That, that is you the hope. I mean, that is. I I do feel with all of the negative things that we see in the world, particularly in the Middle East at the moment and elsewhere, you know, one can get quite dark quite easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I am looking towards this incredible positive astrology of the beginning of 2026. Um, and right. that's a whole other episode we could do. That speaks of a new renaissance, speaks of a whole new system coming Well, I mean, place. especially with Neptune and Saturn conjuncting. Yeah. Do they conjunct at zero? At zero degrees Oh Aries. my yeah, gosh. Yeah. And that is interesting because wow. whenever it's Aries, Aries is the beginning. Yeah, especially at yeah. zero degrees. <laughs> You know, whenever something's at the zero degrees of particularly the cardinal signs, which is yeah. Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, and um, Libra. Libra, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those those indicate the birth of something new. Mm -hmm. And then we're getting all of these planets at that time going into air signs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the so majority. It's, uh, it's it's a very positive astrology, so I would mm -hmm. say, you know, like, let's hold that intention for humanity. Um, yeah. We do move into a, a renaissance period in human history, but I think a lot of that is indicated by the technological revolution, revolution. that's happening. And I think, yeah. you know, Uranus conjunct, um, it's a, such an important transit, Uranus conjunct, um, Pluto, uh, Jupiter, Jupiter. Jupiter conjunct Uranus on the 20th of April this year. Yeah. Like, I would really pay attention to all the news, particularly around technology. Uh -huh. If there's some big announcement technologically wise on that day or around that day, give or take a few days either side, it's significant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, we're headed into a very <laughs> new future time. here. Yeah. And cool. I think everything's going to speed up a lot, uh, especially by 2026. Yeah. And we could potentially solve some of these major problems we see in the world. I hope so. But, uh, slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, no, really great.